What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield of UGC 2021 Series 8 Showdown, not Showdown Live, what am I talking about? Actual in-game content. Today I have a, a brand new team and it's been a while since I straight up dropped a team code, but I feel like this is a really solid team that I like a lot. It's the Eternatus team I used in the video the other day. We got Power Herb Eternatus with Sludge Bomb, Flame Thrower, Dynamax Cannon, Meteor Beam, uh, Focus Ash, Regieleki, Standard Set, a Lumberry, Max Speed, Max Special Attack, Landers Therian, Special Defensive Porygon 2, Assault Vest Kartana, and a Life Orb Glacier. It's a really cool team. I had a lot of fun with it. There's the code at the bottom of the screen if you want to use it. If you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. Daily being in quotations because lately I've been a little bit busy, uh, but you know how it is. And we're at the beginning of a new season, so Great Ball Tier once again. Do me a favor, uh, answer my comment question of the day. Which season or which series did you have like the most trouble actually getting out of Great Ball Tier and into Master Ball Tier? Let me know. I think for me it was Series 6. I genuinely didn't enjoy Series 6 and I think as soon as I hit Master Ball Tier I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm not playing the rest of the series. <laughs> it just wasn't fun for me. I, I found the hyper offensive shenanigans to be just a little bit annoying. Uh, and it's ironic that in a format with legendaries allowed and we see less hyper offense and more balance. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So yeah, uh, I've been trying to motivate myself to make more content lately. Uh, I've just been really busy with school and stuff, so it's hard to find a moment to sit down and make content and have it not feel like I'm just forcing it into my schedule. But uh, hopefully things just get a little bit easier. Ooh, okay. So we're facing a straight up non-legendary team. Uh, they have a Zapdos, Duraldon, on Tapu Fini, Amoongus, don't think it, don't think it, don't think it. I don't, I don't even want to think about a Moongus. Uh, we have an Entei and a Grim Snarl. Now, versus this team, Power of Eternatus goes absolutely stupid. I'm just going to say it that way. It goes absolutely stupid. I'm going to go ahead and lead off Power of Eternatus, and I think Landers isn't a bad lead either. It'll help me deal with a possible uh, Amoongus lead. On top of that, it's just really solid versus the rest of the team. Porygon 2 doesn't seem like a bad option at all. Uh, but I'm also tempted to go with the Regieleki. I think that actually might be my squad. Yeah, I think I actually really like that. So we'll go Porygon to Regieleki. Regieleki in the back is just really nice for speed control and stuff. Uh, I mean, my Eternus outspeeds their entire team, which is really funny. Uh, it, this is actually an Eternus speed crept to outspeed the genies. So that's really nice. Uh, I actually took you guys as, as advice. Uh, in the last video, you pointed out that I could have gotten one more point in speed and HP by switching to a modest nature, so I did that. So I appreciate that. You guys actually helped me out quite a bit there. As they go Zapdos Grimmsnarl, uh, typically Zapdos is just going to like Dynamax in this situation. I think what I want to do is just go for the Meteor Beam and get in my Regieleki. Uh, Regieleki will allow me to, if, if they like go for screens and stuff, I'm going to set off like a weakness policy. I hope not though, they might just go for <laughs> max airstream and a life orb. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click power meter beam into the Zapdos and try to get in the Regieleki here, which will give me some speed control with Electroweb, since at plus one I should still be outspeeding a Zapdos since I'm timid max speed. At least I think so, I'm like 90% sure. I don't have my phone on me, so I can't pull out the extreme speed app. Where is my phone? I'll find it later. Getting the Reggie Lecky here. As they do Dynamax, if it's a Grim Snarl, I am going to absolutely lose my mind, but it's definitely going to be that Zapdos. There's no way they don't Dynamax Zapdos here. Alright, nice. And for the most part, a super effective plus one um, Meteor Beam does the exact same amount as Dynamax Cannon versus Dynamax Mons. So this is going to be doing a, a, a large amount of damage. As they end up faking out the Internus, uh, that's whatever. Honestly. They go for a max Airstream. Into the Regieleki. The good ending. The good ending. I just want to point that out. That was the good ending. <laughs> I can go for a... Um, I can go for another one of my Meteor Beams as well as an Electro Web. And they are Life Orb, which is really nice. Meteor Beam into the Zapdos. Go for an Electro Web. As long as they don't have, like, Sucker Punch on Grim Snarl, I should be fine here. Or Scary Face. Scary Face would be very annoying. I might need to, uh... I might need to Dynamax my Lando when it comes back in. 
As they go for a light screen, I pretty much expected that. I get my Electroweb off, so now my Eternus will once again be outspeeding the Zapdos, and I'm going to be doing a solid amount of damage. Not as much as I would have been if the light screen wasn't up, but still a good amount. Hopefully I don't miss. I feel like I always miss Meteor Beam when I, like, absolutely can't afford to. Get that power, we're up to plus one. And we do connect. We do a solid chunk of damage. Honestly, I think I'd rather take the max airstream into the uh, Eternatus at this point. Alright, cool, cool. I'm going to be outspeeding you for one more turn, and I'm actually just going to take that thing out. Cool. So, I can go for another Electroweb. And I'm somewhat tempted to... Sludge Bomb the Grim Snarl. I don't know if that's my play, though. I don't think that is. I think I need to take out Zapdos. Grim Snarl isn't too annoying to deal with. So I'm just going to go for the Dynamax Cannon into the Zapdos as I go for an Electroweb once more uh, to let myself outspeed it. Yeah, they don't protect. I was somewhat concerned about a protect, which is, you know, my main thing there. I was like, okay, if they protect, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Hopefully the Spirit Break actually just goes into the Regieleki. That'd be pretty sweet. As I get my thumbnail. That is the thumbnail moment for this video. We get the KO. I could have gone for like a sludge bomb or something, but I think this was just safer. I always get, whenever I try to go for those very conservative plays where I'm like, okay, I don't need to use the Dynamax Cannon here. I can just go for a neutral move and do a decent amount of damage. I always feel like it never works out for me. <laughs> like I always uh, get the lowest possible roll, so I just didn't want to risk it at that point. So I'm going to go into my Lando here. Or I could actually go P2. That might be better. I'll go P2 here. Because uh, if it's a if it's a Tapu Fini, I can actually do a lot here. There's the Amoongus. Okay. I guess Lando would have been better. I think they're going to just try to sleep my Porygon too. So I'm going to get in the Lumberry Lando. And I suppose if it is Focus Sash Amoongus, it's in my best interest just to Electroweb again. Because that'd be really annoying to face Focus Sash. And if they go for a uh, Rage Powder, that's even better. Yep, there's the Rage Powder. So I might just catch a Spirit Break into the uh, Regieleki slot, which is alright. Now, as long as it's not Koba Berry, I should be fine to knock this thing out. I get a critical hit on the Amoongus too. I was going to say, that looked like it's way too much for what this Pokemon is. So they go for the Spirit Break into Regieleki, I assume. Yep, there it is. There goes Regieleki. I do feel like I'm in a really good position, though. Uh, I can go for a Max Airstream into the Amoongus as well as a... Try attack since I should be outspeeding here. By the way, the, the Porygon 2 on this team is actually the event Porygon 2 that we got after Player's Cup 2. I just wanted to point that out. I, I absolutely love the event Porygon 2. Just the fact that we have a P2 in that red ball is really cool. Let's go for the Max Airstream as well as a Try attack. As we finally Dynamax in this game. That's the fun thing about Eternus. Like, you can either just you know, lead with it, deal a ton of damage, and then Dynamax. Uh, or you can just bring it in the back to deal with, like, the entire opponent's, like, weakened team. It does so much damage. And it's a, like, it's at a really solid speed tier, too. I just want to point that out. Oh, you know what? It just dawned on me that I never gave Dynamax candies to this Porygon 2. It just dawned on me that I never gave Dynamax candies to this Porygon 2. So after this match, what I'm going to do is actually... Dang, I'm going to have to edit the new rental code in. Because this, this Porygon 2 doesn't have the candies. Yeah, after this match, what I'm going to do is um, fix that and then give you guys the new code. That's the try attack We'll pick up the KO from this range, I believe. Yes, okay, cool. Not that it would have mattered. I'm assuming they would have just gone for the Spore into the Landorus. And in comes the Tapu Fini. So I feel pretty good about my position. 
What I can do here is go for a Max Quake into the Grim Snarl, and I believe it's in range now. I believe it's in range. Uh, and I'll actually just go for an Eerie Impulse for the Tapu Fini. So we'll Max Quake, go for the Eerie Impulse into Tapu Fini, and that'll uh, lower the special attack to the point where it's not really much of a threat to Landorus, especially Dynamaxed. Yeah, I feel good about this. You know, unless they go for like a crit choice specs ice beam, I should be absolutely fine. As Quake does KO, which is really nice. And uh, this should just seal the deal, really. I don't see the Tapu Fini being able to beat P2 and Lando. I, I absolutely love Eerie Impulse P2. It's such a, like... Literally, literally exactly what I said. I'm gonna check this freaking. Oh my god, guys! I'm not kidding. I did not. I, this is not a post com. This is a live com. I am going to check what this P2 or what, what this what this Tapu Fini set is, and if it's choice specs, I am going to lose my mind. <laughs> if I just faced choice specs Tapu Fini and lost to that, well, I'm not going to because Tritech should do enough. Um, unless it's Calm Mind, in which case I lose. Oh my god. Okay, alright. No, you, you better not have Calm Mind. I better win. Oh my... This is gonna be... This is gonna be an annoying endgame. <laughs> it's not choice specs, but... Oh my god. Really, the crit ice beam? Literally the exact move that I said they needed to do. I mean, I have, I have eight more of these. That should be enough. Unless they get special attack drops. I need like one crit. Or maybe like once the terrain is gone, I need like a freeze or a burn. Honestly, a burn would be the best outcome. Because I get that residual damage. There's the ice beam. Okay, I'm cool with them going for that. Moonblast did more anyways. And they're not going to be able to freeze me with this terrain up. Alright, they're at about half. Their light screen's gone too, so... Do this again. Next turn, I'm going to go for a recover. I'm not messing with that anymore. They go for an ice beam. Okay, feel free to do that. Feel free to do that. Okay, we're doing a lot more now. Mist disappeared from the battlefield. I'm going to go ahead and recover here. That was so annoying. Muddy water. I'm cool with that. Go for muddy water. I'm, I'm, I'd am I'm. rather... Actually, no. I, I don't think I'd rather miss. I think I'd... <laughs> I don't think I'd rather miss. Never mind. Because I only have so many... I only have so many um, tri-attacks I can go for. All right, I just need to land one or two more. One or two good try attacks. Depending on the rolls. So hopefully no accuracy drops, no hacks, please. This is clearly like just straight up offensive Tapu Fini too. Don't you dare. Don't you dare freeze me. Okay, that's one. Is it enough? Can I crit just so I don't have to deal with this anxiety? Nope, one more turn of anxiety, okay. <laughs> we only have so many, man. We only have four more. Just to go for the ice beam. Don't you dare. Don't you dare freeze me. If you don't freeze me, I win. Don't freeze me. Don't freeze me. Don't freeze me. Oh, I am going to go stupid. I am going to go stupid, man. I am going to lose my mind. At this point, I don't even click recover. I just have to keep clicking and hope I thaw. Oh my god. I think we can maybe survive one more. Can I? Oh my god. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? Come on. Come on, P2. Just thaw. Just thaw. Just thaw. Come on. Come on. 
Oh, really? Really? That's how we're starting the season. Okay. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to go fix this P2, and then I'll be back. That is the most annoying match I think I've ever had. I, I, I have to say, that has to be quite possibly the most annoying match I've ever had. Okay, well, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm going to go fix this Porygon and give you guys a new code. Okay, so it turns out I actually did give the Porygon to the Dynamax candy, so I'm fine. I just assumed I forgot. That being said, it's only been about 30 seconds since I lost that match, so I'm not exactly cooled down. <laughs> We're going to try again, though. Yeah, uh, that was annoying because I, I, like, you know, I got crit by the Ice Beam to lose my Lando, which wouldn't have killed at plus one Dynamax. And then my Porygon got frozen. It just wasn't a good time overall, you know? But we're going to put that behind us. We're going to put that amazing play that they made behind us. And we're going to we're gonna go ahead and uh, play another match, you know? I'm just going to live with it. That's how you do with Pokemon. You know, I, in fact, despite everything that happened, I'm going to say it. Good game. I'm going to say good game, because that's sportsmanlike. Good game. Now I just need to... Uh, win one so I don't feel like trash. <laughs> I might even uh, live stream tonight. I don't know. I, I'm, I've been trying to get back into live streaming. I always want to be like a, a, a good live streamer, you know, and live stream consistently, but life gets in the way and it's, I find it very difficult to uh, find time to live stream these days. I used to be able to do it like every night. All right. So, we're facing uh, just a Dragapult Colossal team plus Satian. For this matchup, uh, P2 is incredible. P2 is actually incredible for this matchup. What I like to do is actually go P2 Lando on lead, because it deals with both leads. If they go with Venucole, I'm able to max Airstream into Venusaur. Uh, if they go with Dragapult Colossal, I'm able to either Trick Room or just KO the Colossal. I don't really lose much by doing that. Uh, it's it's always a pretty decent way of playing it. Uh, in the back here, because I'm going Trick Room, I'm probably going to want to bring the Glacier, and I think my last Pokemon's going to be Lando. Or not Lando, um, Eternatus. So yeah, let's see, uh, let's see if we can pull off a win for today's video. I feel like Eerie Impulse is going to be my best friend in this match if they end up going Colossal Mode. Honestly, I haven't seen too much Colossal in this format. Colossal is always going to be like a good format or a good Pokemon in Dynamax format. But I don't think it's ever going to be the best Pokemon, you know? All right, let's see what they lead off with. The leads always like make the game in these matchups. As they go Zacian and Gastron, not at all a lead I expected, but a lead that I appreciate. Because I should be able to Trick Room here. Yeah, I should be able to Trick Room. Um, and Zacian wouldn't appreciate a Max Quake either. I just don't want to Dynamax so early is the thing. I'd rather keep this thing around. Hmm. I suppose I could Dynamax early. I almost want to just go for the raw Earthquake, to be honest. But I don't have anything to switch into that. Uh, I, I think Trick Room is definitely my play, though. It's just a matter of what I do with this slot, you know? I can just Protect. Protect seems fine. Eh, nah, I'll just Dynamax. I don't care. I don't care. As long as I KO the Zacian, I'm cool with this turn. Yeah, and I think I will be able to KO the Zacian, since Behemoth Blade, you know, when it's at neutral, it shouldn't be able to one-shot Lando without a crit. Eh. 
And even though I'm trick rooming and Dynamaxing this early, it's literally just to get rid of their restricted. Glacier, like, under trick room is essentially a restricted. <laughs> if that makes sense, it's, it's effectively a restricted Pokemon. <laughs> Alright, go for the Quake there as they try to get off a Substitute. I'm cool with that. I get a special defense boost, so I don't really mind the uh, Ice Beam if it comes my way. Then again, I said that last time. If it goes for Yawn, I'd actually prefer that. They go for a Scald, that's fine. Don't burn me. Okay, cool. I'm fine with this. Get my Trick Room off. Get my Swag on. <laughs> uh, and I think I'm just going to go for another Max Quake into the Zacian as I go for an Eerie Impulse into this Gastrodon. I could also try to KO the Gastrodon. But I think I earn more from trying to KO the Zacian. It could have Protect Substitute, but it could also be Swords Dance Substitute, which I see a lot. I'd rather it be Swords Dance Substitute, because then I just get a free attack on this turn. On something, or maybe I just take the Zacian. As they withdraw, okay. And it's Torkoal. That's amazing. Because I get an Eerie Impulse off on this thing, which is always great. And they do go for the Protect. And I think my play here would be to... I mean, I'm doing a solid chunk of damage here, even though it's like, you know, protecting. It's going to be doing a lot. Since we're under Trick Room, the Burning Jealousy, if they're carrying it, would go first. And if they go for a Yawn, I'm still good because of the Lumberry. So I'm just going to go for another Quake. I really am. I'm just going to go for another Quake. Uh, and I think I want to go for Tri-Attack damage on this Torkoal since it's not doing that much. Quake into Zacian again. And they just forfeit. They're like, yeah, yeah, I can't do this. <laughs> They're like, I'm not going to be able to kill that P2. <laughs> I mean, that's what you say, but you can always freeze it. I like how I said I was going to get over it, and then I just don't. <laughs> Alright, let's get one more. Let's get one more for the video. That was a really quick one. Continue battling. I wonder what their last Pokemon was. It had to be Venusaur, right? It had to be Venusaur. Which is why they were like, yeah, I can't win this. Because Lando was at an absurd special defense stat. Uh, it was still Dynamaxed, right? It would have ended that turn, but uh, I would have been able to shut down the Venusaur pretty easily because I'm underspeeding it in Trick Room, I'm going to be able to Eerie Impulse it. It was just a bad position for them overall. As we're facing a Expanding Horse team. I haven't played Expanding Horse in a long time. I haven't. Um, But I really like Regilucky Eternatus versus this team. In the back, it looks like Glacier is really, really nice. And I think I'm going to go P2. And I'm just going to lock that in and not think about it again. Because every time I think about things twice, it doesn't work. <laughs> I have to go on my gut. Sometimes you have to go in your gut. But yeah, uh, Eternatus Regilecki is always a really solid lead for this team because Electroweb into Meteor Beam will 100% KO a Thunderous. Uh, and if they end up going for a... If they end up going for the um, Calyrex lead, I'm just in a generally good position. Because I get good speed control. Um, I don't have to Dynamax my lead to take a hit defensively. Uh, and I'm just, you know, I just I just genuinely enjoy the position I'm in. <laughs> the only thing is if they lead off Calyrex, I would have to go for a Dynamax Cannon instead of Meteor Beam, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, and if they end up going Calyrex and Deedee, it isn't the best position. <laughs> but P2 helps out a lot there. Ugh. <clears throat> Okay, so we're getting into this match. I really need to start bringing water when I record a video. There's a lot of talking, right? So you need water. I just, like, never bring it with me. This guy's got the Reggie Lucky drip, dude. As he goes Torkoal and Didi, which... Honestly? 
I can live with that. I can live with that. I don't really see a, a reason, um... I don't see a reason not to electroweb, to be honest. I guess maybe Thunderbolt into Meteor Beam is more likely to KO is the thing that I should be looking out for here. But also, mm, let me think. I really want to get rid of Torkoal, to be honest. I think what I'll do is... I could Volt Switch Meteor Beam into the Ndidi, and that might KO it, depending on how specially defensive they're running it. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm not too scared of Torkoal. As they do follow me, I'm assuming they're going to go for a Yawn. Or even an Eruption, but I don't mind the Eruption too much. They didn't go for Expanding Force, which is phenomenal. I'm going to go ahead and get in the P2 here. Get a nice little download boost. A special attack rise is always, always a welcome sight. And I get my Meteor Beam. Hopefully I connect. And there we go. Nice little Meteor Beam for the Ndidi. That should KO. I was going to say, if Regieleki did that much, I'm definitely KOing with Meteor Beam. As they go for an Eruption. A bold move. A bold move. Um, but I don't really think I care too much. I, I really don't. Uh, if they send out the Calyrex, I may just Eerie Impulse them. Yeah, there's the Calyrex. I think my play is just to Eerie Impulse the Calyrex. And I'll go for a Protect with my Eternatus. Oh, I, I don't have that. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I literally don't have that option. Uh, Regieleki seems very important to the end game is the thing here. Um, or I could even Dynamax P2. I could even Dynamax P2 and just target Colossal. Or target the Torkoal. Maybe I'd do that. No, that's stupid, right? I think I Eerie Impulse. And... I'll just accept the loss of my of my guy here. I'll accept the loss of this guy. Go for the Dynamax Cannon into the Calyrex. Yeah, P2 is able to hang on, which is what matters here. They get a Grim Nay boost, but they're going to be going back down to minus one. And the Earth Power should KO. Yeah, critical hit didn't matter there. Um, I still have full health on my Regieleki, which is really nice. I'm kind of... I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of tempted. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to... Um, Dynamax the Regieleki, but I don't think it's worth it at all. I think my play is always going to be to uh, Electroweb here. And Dynamax this bad boy for a Max Quake into the Torkoal, since that should KO the Torkoal, I think. It's Life Orb, so it'll do a lot. Uh, Expanding Force won't KO the Regieleki since I have a Focus Sash. Oh, my monitor just turned off for some reason. Okay. And we're back. As long as I connect this on the Calyrex, I'm not really in a bad spot. I, I guess Torkoal is the thing I need to connect it on more than anything, just so I can make sure I can KO it. And it looks like they decide not to Dynamax. Oh, 
All right. No protect. Oh, they do Dynamax, but they Dynamax the Torkoal? What? Okay, uh, I should be able to live this hit. But just barely is the issue. Okay, interesting. Interesting call. Uh, at the very least, I'm going to keep my Regieleki this turn, I think. Like, don't get me wrong, a Max Flare is going to hurt. But I think Glacier at plus one may just be able to take it. Expanding Force. Oh, okay, they just crit my Glacier. Never mind, I lose. Okay, well that's disappointing. Maybe I crit here. If I crit here, I might be able to win. No, not quite. Actually, mm, I might be able to have to crit the Calyrex. I have to crit this Calyrex with an Electro Web. And then hope whatever's in the back is weak. And they're actually Citrus Berries, so probably not. Let's go for the Max Flare. You know, at the, the speed at which that health bar dropped, I don't know if it really says anything, but I feel like I might have been okay. I'm going to have to double crit. That's my only out. Electroweb. Can I double crit, please? By the way, I, d I don't I don't think I win. I don't think I win. Just so you know. He's taking his time. He's taking his time. I don't really know what he has to think about though. Cuz they withdraw the Calyrex. Interesting. Um Oh, I guess Urshifu makes sense for Sucker Punch, but there's still, there's still like a turn where you can't. Oh, <gasps> wait. Hold on, I have a chance to win if there's if Psychic Train runs out, which I don't think I, I think it does actually, or if Psychic Train doesn't run out. But if if it does run out, I still have kind of a chance to win. Because Sucker Punch is what they're gonna have to go for. Okay, uh, I have to crit both of these things again. Yeah, I don't win. <laughs> nope. Okay. Well, that's that's kind of annoying. Um, I don't know how much the expanding force crit mattered. It definitely felt like it mattered, but it's it's whatever. to go for the Astro Barrage to KO. So overall, not the most successful first days on the ladder, but regardless, it was a day and it was a fun team. So <laughs> we're just going to live with it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like and then subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications because I bring you quote daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. And I think I'm going to live stream tonight. I think tonight's the night I live stream again. I'll clean my room because I don't have any, I don't have any classes for the rest of the day. I don't have any homework due for a while. I think I'm going to stream. So I'll see you guys uh, probably at around like 5 or 6 p.m. Have a nice night. See you in the next video.